Hey everyone, today we're going to walk through modeling data for a transactional system, technically named an OLT database. This model is commonly in applications for any system where data entry is the focus, as it protects against bad data occurring. Today's project is going to be designing a database for library data, tracking books and people borrowing them. Disclaimer, this is for a fictional application. When modeling OLTP data, much of the design is influenced by the specific needs. We'll be focusing on more general concepts. So let's get to it. First thing to do when considering a data model is to understand the business or operation processes. In the case of a library, a borrower goes to a library, finds a book, and borrows it. They should be able to look up the book by author, publisher, topic, etc. And we should know what books each library has available, what's checked out, and when they're due back. Knowing this gives us an idea of what sort of tables and fields we'll want. We'll need to store information like books, borrowers, libraries, where the books are at, who has borrowed what book, various addresses, authors, publishers, and details about the books. So let's say a library has all their data stored on an Excel sheet, and we want to get this into a proper database. We'll do this by formatting the data into third normal form, a method to reduce redundancy and maximize integrity. So here's a spreadsheet of all the raw data that the libraries collect. You can see we have borrower, information about the book they got, and where they got it. All that in a single spreadsheet they've been using. So first step is to get into first normal form, when each cell contains a single value and each record is unique. So for example, in the ISBN field, which is international identifier for books, we have Benjamin Monroe getting two books separated by a comma. We want each of these books to have their own record as a cell should not have multiple values. Down here at the bottom, we can see it split into a record for each. Also, we have Ashlyn Hudson with two different addresses. We don't know if this is two different people with the same name or one person who has perhaps changed addresses. So we're going to issue a card number for each borrower as a unique key to identify individuals. In this case, they are two people, both named Ashlyn Hudson. So they get card number two and card number three. To achieve second normal form, each record must contain data for a single primary key or topic. So we'll want to identify a unique key for each topic in the data and ensure all fields in the table are directly related to that key. We previously added card number for our borrowers as a unique key, so everything in this table should be dependent on that card number. But for example, the author of Antiques Roadkill is not a dependent on the borrower's card number so it does not belong in the same table. So at the top here, we have three distinct topics in our data, borrower information, library information, and book information. So we'll split these into three tables. We'll add library ID as a key in case names change or are duplicates. But for book table, we can use ISBN as it's a unique key already. Also note that even though there are two cases for Summit Library in the data, we remove duplicates so it only appears once in the library table. And then in third normal form, we want to avoid transitive functional dependencies, which means we want all fields to be determined only by the table key and no other columns. An example of a good field is title. A book title will always be directly dependent on what the ISBN is. But while a publisher address might be related to a book, it's also determined by the publisher. If the publisher changed, the address would have to change as well. And in turn, if a publisher address changed, it would change for all books published by them. So this should be isolated into its own table. The end result will look something like this, displayed in an entity relationship or ER diagram. You'll see all of our tables, books, publishers, libraries, and some of the fields contained within the raw data spreadsheet. I've also gone ahead and split address out into multiple fields for more precise data, which then required them to be in their own table, addresses, to achieve third normal form as they became transitive fields dependent on the address ID. I've also gone ahead and moved authors into their own table with only name it could go within the book table, 
but it seemed like a topic we could get additional fields for later, so I've proactively moved it to its own table. This is where considering your application's unique needs can impact your design decisions. All the lines connecting tables is how the relationships form. Primary keys in one table will show up as foreign keys in another table, telling us how they all connect. So author ID is the primary key of authors, and an author can show up on many records in the book table. We'll be able to join these tables to see what the author name of a specific book is. In the case of books and libraries, books can appear in multiple libraries, and libraries can have multiple books. We call this a many-to-many -many relationship and connect them through a junction table, or a bridge table, or a bunch of other names people have come up with. But they all mean the same thing. These will contain IDs from both tables being joined, in this case, ISBN from books, library ID from libraries, but it can also include additional fields such as the number of copies of each book in each library. In the case of addresses, it is a multi-use table. We store all the addresses here, whether they are tied to a publisher, borrower, or library. That way, any update to an address occurs in one spot and will propagate to any connected table. The last thing to note is I've prefixed all of the IDs with the table name. It's common in applications to just use ID for every table, but when working with the data, you'll end up with queries that say where ID equals ID and ID equals ID and ID equals ID and it can cause a lot of headaches and incorrect joins. It can really help troubleshooting to add the table name prefix to the ID. With this data model, we can run some simple queries. Here we have a select from publishers joined to the addresses to get the addresses of each publisher. We can easily run inserts to add new records. We can update a publisher, so let's say they move addresses so we can just update the key to their new address. This runs quickly. Since it's transactional, you only have to update one location and don't have to worry about duplicates, orphaned records, or other bad data occurrences. But since it's designed to run one transaction at a time, it's not as efficient at running large lookup or analysis queries. For instance, trying to search for times a specific author had books checked out, you have to join quite a few tables to link a city with a number of times an author was checked out there. So that's a quick look at designing a transactional database, normalized data, and some of the reasoning behind the design. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.